Hello and welcome back to Sandra's Shelf. Today we have another important topic and it's how to pay off your student loan debts quicker. I'm going to share with you my 7 invaluable tips on paying off your student loan debts quicker. I know that having student loan debts really puts on a pressure to a lot of us. It plagues most of us, most of us that are millennials, Gen Z, whatever it is. Sometimes student loan debts, they can drag out into your even late 30s, early 40s. It all depends what you've studied, how many years of education you did, and how much time and money you invested in basically your debt repayment and whatnot. Today, I want to share with you these seven invaluable tips. I also would like to preface in for the sake of transparency that I paid my student loan debts in full and I did it all by myself. I basically worked all throughout my university. I had a bachelor's degree and I also had a master's degree at the same university, University of Toronto. That was a lot of money. However, I did use OSAP student loans. That's the student loans for Ontario. A lot of the times the OSAP aid in student loans did not cover my full tuition and it definitely did not cover my my transport textbooks etc that I had to pay from my own pocket so I was working one to two jobs depending I would work a stable job on the weekend so I had a part-time job and I also tutored on the side and did other things on the side but that is not the video for today that is not the content of this video if you want to know exactly how I paid off my 40,000 student loan debt and specifically this 27,000 in full then I have a blog post link down below it's a very long blog post like 7,000 words I made sure to go through everything for you I made it very detailed and I hope to help people as they're starting school or even after school to make better decisions money decisions in order to actually save a lot of money in order to pay it off student loan debts quicker but that is like I said another video if you ever want me to make that blog post into a full video it might be 20 to 30 minutes long but it would be super helpful for some of you i'm sure for now i'm just going to talk about general tips that are super invaluable to help you pay off student loan debts quicker the reason why you would even want to pay off your student loan debts quicker is because looking at that number that outstanding student loan repayment number that you need to pay can be quite frightening it can actually hang over you in every choices you make in life you can you know lose sleep over it because as you grow older you actually collect more and more debts depending depending how you manage your money and what situations you're in sometimes we're in unfortunate situations and it really some things we can't prevent or we're not we don't have enough money saved up to prevent some situations so obviously it's understandable everyone's journey with their money is different i'm just trying to share these tips to help you and i'm just trying to tell you why it's a good thing to pay it off quicker rather than slower and later that's also my personal opinion i know it's not the opinion of everyone but these are my three main reasons as to why you would want to pay off your student loan debts quicker the first and obvious reason is to reduce the stress and anxiety of having that student loan debt luring around the background and always hanging above you second big reason is to save yourself from the interest rates that are keep on going on your student loan debts the third reason is to help you to save your money for other big financial decisions in your life so such as saving for a home, saving for retirement, etc., saving for a marriage. We all need to save money at some point for the big stuff that's happening maybe in our late 20s, early 30s, all depending. And having that student loan debt can cause problems. In order to accomplish these big financial goals, it's better to have your student loan debt already paid off. The best thing is always to not have any debt. It makes your chances easier to, you know, get a mortgage, to get a house, get approved by a bank, able to start a business if you have good credit and you don't have any outstanding debts that are in your name. That's why you should be paying off your student loan debts quicker in that sense. So the first thing to do is to figure out your loan timeline. Ask yourself and answer these following questions. Do you know when you have to start making your first payment? Do you know how long approximately it will take you to pay off your student loan debts in full? Is there a grace period before you even have interest collecting on your debt? Is there a grace period before you have to start meeting the minimum monthly payment on your debt? In essence, if you want to pay your student loan debts quicker, you should be able to know when your pay period starts, what is the minimum that you have to start repaying like the 
the absolute minimum, as well as the percentage of interest that comes with your loan. Some student loans offer six months grace period after graduation, but you need to be cautious and stay informed because sometimes these rules and regulations concerning student loans tend to change with your government. Times even you don't even have really a grace period and interest starts to collect. You don't have to repay your student loan yet, but the interest does collect from the moment you graduate. So that was the case with my student loan repayment and that's why I decided to pay in full instead of collecting interest. Although I did have six months before I even start making the minimum monthly payment that they set up. Although it might be scary and threatening to see that number on the screen, you should always be knowledgeable and know how much you owe. Knowledge and self-awareness is always the first step into taking accountability and fixing things in your life. So a lot of us have been there, but you have to do it. You have to be aware and so if you're aware of the amount you're still owing you're more likely to want to pay it off quicker so my second tip is to understand the interest rates understanding the interest rates will greatly influence how quickly you would like to pay your student loan debt it actually might even motivate you to pay them off quicker than you first initially anticipated. At the time that I graduated, my student loan rates looked a lot like this. It was either a floating interest rate equal to the prime rate or a fixed interest rate of the prime rate plus 2%. A quick word on these two rates. The first rate can be more beneficial but it also can be less beneficial because you never know with the floating rate how it's going to look like from year to year. Second one, I don't know like you at least you know that it's standard at the prime rate but also you do know that it increases from two percent all the time so in that sense you'd have to do some guesstimating and a little bit of math I mean the second you don't have that guesstimation but at the same time you could be saving more money if you went with a floating rate so it all depends on you and actually it all depends on your system you might not have these same options it might be 2%, 3%, 4%. It all depends where you live and you know which country, which government, etc. I live in Ontario, so that was what it looked like at the time that I graduated and it might be changing. Another thing you want to consider is that you can actually refinance your student loan and find something with a lower rate. The third tip is to have a budget. Listen, I don't even think I need to explain it to you, but in case you really do think you don't need a budget, let me explain it to you because I used to think I don't need a budget and a lot of other people I know think that they didn't need a budget until they realized that their money was just leaving their pockets every week, every day, every month and then they never saved money and they never could save money and they basically, I would not want to say wasting money but they're not too conscious or aware of how their money is going and leaving their pockets. So that's why I always say that you should have a budget. I even made free a budget for you. You can go and download it. I'll leave the link down below where you can access the blog post and download my free budget. Spent some time making it. I made it as nice and clear and concise and as useful as I can. When you have a budget, you're more likely to stick to your monetary goals. Having a budget will allow you to know your monthly income. It will also help you track your expenses. And as I said, by doing so, you will be aware of where your money is going. You will also be aware of any discrepancies on how much money you're making and how much money you're spending. So some months, maybe you would want to save more so you can be able to pay more on your student loan debts. Maybe you tell yourself the next six months, you're going to try to save as much as you can in order to use that same money that you save monthly to pay off your student loan debts quicker. Not having a budget makes spending money an unconscious habit. And so you get into the habit of eating out, spending things, not looking at prices or etc. whatever it is. It just starts to become something you do. Spending money becomes something we all do as a habit rather than a conscious, you know, pull and pull and analyzing type of thing. I'm not saying that we should be over analyzing every monetary decision we make, but where it comes to the point where you're spending without even noticing that you're spending, it's because you've developed a habit of spending. So that's why a budget can be really, really helpful and beneficial to everyone. Even if you feel like you're living the most frugal lifestyle out there, you still might figure things out by having a budget.
My fourth tip is to cut down your monthly expenses. Having a budget is easy because it leads you to this natural step of cutting down some of your monthly expenses because as you already going to analyze and see your spreadsheet, you can see where you're spending the most money and how you can remedy that. So that's how you can even like cut your monthly expenses in half, a quarter, more than half, all depending on the goals that you set for yourself and what you're comfortable with spending, saving, and making. To be completely honest, anything in life that you want to do will involve sacrifices. It's just the way of life. There's no easy there's no easy money. Even like, you know, when people say start an online this business is such easy money, whatever, it's not. They're lying to you. Obviously they want to say that to encourage you to do it, but starting an online business, it's great. You get to work for yourself and it's amazing. And in the long run you have less hours you need to put in. It's just things are running and generating for you. But at the beginning, it's a lot of hard work. And so it's the same thing with your student loan debts. At the beginning, it might be a lot of hard work until you come to a point where you feel maybe comfortable or you just need to have that last push and then you pay it all off or you're comfortable enough that the interests are not accruing like crazy anymore that you know you can tackle your highest debt first and then work your way through so it all requires sacrifices everything in life requires sacrifices nothing is for free so my budget tracker though it is for free so i know i'm saying nothing is for free but you know what i mean there's nothing for free like when you go on my website and download the free budget you are actually going to my website and bringing me traffic so you see it is still free but it still brings me something so it's it's, it's, it's a complicated thing. If you think about money, if you think about how life operates, it's really complicated and it all pulls down to this established balance. So, you know, sometimes the balance needs to be a little bit out of whack for you to get somewhere. So, the thing is, if you want to pay off your student loan debts, it does pull down to two things. Either you're going to save more money so you can pay it off or you're going to make more money to, so you can pay it off. So you might be on, in one of two boats where you can make more money than you already have because you're working that much. In that case, you have to save money. Or you could be in the boat where you're not working that much so you can actually take another part-time job in order to make the money and pay it off. For many people, it's easier to cut down and save on monthly expenses instead. So here are some of the common ways you can cut down your monthly expenses. So you can cut down on your phone bills. So you could, you know, call your phone provider and be like, listen, I want to have a cheaper phone bill or you basically negotiate like I do. Uh, actually, I don't do it. My mom does it for me because she's better at that. She has a lot of experience with negotiation. So, you know, take a call and just be like, I been a customer for X amount of years and I would like to do this, 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 this. If not, I will find another provider that will do it cheaper for me, etc. Normally it does the trick. If you want to know more on how you can negotiate prices on these type of services, I always highly recommend I will teach you to be rich by Ramit Sethi the book. If you haven't watched my video on the three personal finance books that I highly recommend, it's in that video. I will also have a link to that book down below. Ramit Sethi basically offers these scripts in which you can basically save more money on everything you purchase and buy. The next thing you can do is you can walk more or share rides rather than using transit or driving. This will save you extra money, it will save you gas, it will save you transit money because transit has become super expensive in the late years. So walking more instead or sharing rides or car rides with family and friends could be an option for you as well. Being in more often is an obvious one. A lot of people don't want to do this one though. It's super obvious. Although you don't, maybe you don't go to like fancy restaurants and stuff and you're like, oh, it's not amounting too much. But if you do count every time you eat anything out, like any anything as little as like a snack, not even from Starbucks, like any little snack of like one, two dollars, you will see that all of it adds up at the end of the day. This one, if you're in your early 20s, might be harder for you, but honestly, trust me, take it from me, it is useful for your mental health and your well-being as well. You should reduce the amount of going out, basically the amount you're spending on drinks going out, on entertainment going out, etc. The quicker you get into these habits, the better, the less you have a habit of going out for everything, you know, like 
sometimes there is more of a value of going out for a specific event in which you know let more loose spend more money if you do that every day or every weekend first of all are you not exhausted come on i'm i'm 24 and i, I couldn't imagine myself going out every weekend i don't even know how i did it at some point you know, at a certain time you need to do some sacrifices i'm not saying going out is the evil you know like i'm not saying you shouldn't see your friends you know instead of going out into you know, bars, clubs, etc., big entertainment stuff. You could have a gathering, have a picnic, you know, have a walk with your friends, you know, just have a movie night with your friends. It's it's still as fun, it's much, much cheaper. Just get a, a bottle of wine, get some snacks, and, you know, have it inside the house. When you pay for the services and environments outside, you pay like five to ten times the price, which is fair because people are working there and it's, you know, they provide you an environment, a safe and welcoming environment, but you need to be aware of where you're spending your money and for maybe a few months you should stay in more often and then until you feel comfortable with your debt and how much you're paying off, then maybe you can start going out more. It's all a recommendation. You know, you don't have to do all of these or you can do all of these. It's all up to you. It's all up to how you feel comfortable spending and saving your money. And I'm just giving you recommendations that personally have helped me to save money. The other thing you can do is buy things used, reduced, or secondhand. You can also cut on membership and subscriptions. Sometimes you purchase all these subscriptions and you're not even using or memberships etc you know they all add up at the end of the month i know some people they have like five to ten memberships and subscriptions and they use those like every three months so at that point you need to evaluate maybe you want to save the next six months to a year on certain type of subscriptions or find an alternative to them or share with other people instead and that could also save you a lot of money even for a six months period. Another advice, like I said, it's just an advice. You can find a cheaper accommodation or you can even share your room. If you save even anywhere from 100 to $300 a month, that makes a big difference on your loan. Say you're only paying 200 on your loan and now you're paying an extra 300 on your loan monthly. It does add up eventually and you could save more and more every month if you feel comfortable when you feel adjusted and pay off your student loan debts quicker so the quicker you save the quicker you will be able to pay it off obviously but i'm just telling you if you really can't save or you have a hard time saving just a few dollars here and there can amount to something but like i said if you're really serious you will find a way to save more and cut more and find you know little things that you can do because how it is not all of us you know come from like rich parents or whatever it is so I, I feel your struggle you know and you can do it you're you're capable of doing it you're capable of managing your money like I said use a budget uh, try some of these recommendations some of these things that I have done and you will be able to get there I'm telling you you will be able to get there I've, I've seen other people get there I've heard other people's stories and they've got there by themselves so don't despair, you know, uh, try to keep your cool because when it comes to money, we can be quite emotional, me included. Make a plan and you got this. The fifth tip is to create an extra source of income. So like I said, uh, the previous tip is to save more money. Now this tip is to create more money. You might be one of those people that saving money is way too challenging. Living a frugal lifestyle is way too challenging or it's just not a lifestyle for you. Then in this case, you will have to most likely have a second stream of income whether it be a part-time job or something you do online it will help you make more money plus this second stream can be temporary it doesn't have to be forever you know what i mean you can start and end it whenever you want it's all on your terms because you're the one trying to make some extra money for a certain period of time until you pay off your student loan debts here are some extra sources of income you might want to consider i have a little list here and if you want to know more i also have a blog post on 10 extra ways to make money online i will link it down below and i go into the ways that i made money online as well so i have that down there for you so here are some of the things you can do sell things that you don't use around your house on ebay or on facebook marketplace start a profitable blog sell printables on your website or on etsy answer online surveys to earn extra cash i like to use swagbucks teach english online a lot of these english teaching courses online classes that you can teach to kids in China or whatever it is. Some of them do require some level of education and others don't. 
so you just need to do a little research and you I'm sure if you're if you're a native English speaker it shouldn't be hard for you to pass any like evaluations or interviews that they have if not you can always teach one of your skills online or in person and make extra money so that's like you know tutoring in something you're good at or a skill that you have or something you've studied in school etc whatever it is just develop a skill and sell it try to sell it to people sell it online sell it in person have some friend like word to mouth recommendations and that can help that's actually how i made most of my second stream of income while i was in school and then here's another one it's a random one but i've done it before i remember when i was a kid and obviously you can't work when you're a kid uh, we used to have a lot of garage sales and i would be the one sitting outside you know uh, looking all cute and trying to <laughs> incite people to buy our stuff and uh, i would take anything from the house and like you know my mom had to say like uh, this is not for sale so that's always a thing you can do you know if you don't want to use if you're not a person that likes to use you know marketplace and whatnot ebay and you don't want to deal with shipping stuff whatever you can always sell your stuff in front of the house as a garage sale but like i said that's just gonna be like a one or two times thing and but you could make up to like one to two thousand dollars on the spot so it all depends a sixth tip is to pay more than a minimum monthly payment and to pay more often as well. It can be something that escapes people's mind when they first start to pay off their debts because they're so intimidated by that big number to begin with. Another thing is if you have an automatic repayment program, maybe that's why you might not think of doing this because you're just used to them taking the money out of your account and paying your student loan debts every month or every two weeks. But now that you're conscious of it, you can change it and you can increase the amount or you can pay directly the amount to your student loan provider. Basically, the idea is twofold. If you've already cut down on your monthly expenses and you made some extra money from whatever it is that you make extra money from, you can start paying more than the minimum monthly payment and you can start paying more often as well. Therefore, you pay it quicker, but that's not the only catch. This is where the second idea comes in. If you pay more often, then you will reduce your interest rates on your student loan. They will stop accumulating as much because you're paying more often and you're paying more than the minimum. You don't have to pay all of it right now, but by doing this and paying more often, you save yourself from the next month's interest rate that's growing on your account. And again, depending on the debts that you have and the debts that you collected and the debts you collected over the debts, you might want to sometimes tackle the bigger debts first or the smaller debts first. It all depends. You need to sit down a little bit and do some calculations and see what benefits you. But I would definitely knock off whatever collects the most interest first. The seventh and final tip is tax deductions. Now let me explain why I'm saying tax deductions. When I was in university for five years, I used this method. I used the tax deductions in, throughout those five years in order to get some money back for all the tuition that I was paying. So annually, I would do this. I would do the tax deduction. Uh, my mom is the one doing the accountant in our house. So she would put in our tuition, etc., and I would get money back every year. So this is another way, kind of, to pay off your student loan debts quicker because you are getting money back that you basically repurpose and reinvest into paying off your student loan. So you basically, the tuition, the big amount in tuition, you can get some money back on that. But again, you need to do some research and see how it works for wherever you're living because it worked for us. It, that's what's recommended to do in Ontario. And you can have tax deduction not only on the tuition costs, but you can also have on other tuition related fees. So for me, it was commuting. I would commute almost every single day and it's a two hours commute one way. So you can imagine how much it costs me in the long run. So I would always keep all of my bills, all of my payments. And again, this is where having a budget, having all that set up comes into hand because if you have proof, then you can send proof and you can get those tax deductions as well. So you need your proof of tuition and your proof of all the fees that you're paying. Also, this is worth investigating and figuring out how it works in wherever you're living. You can also get a tax deduction on your student loan interest. Now, so it's the same thing. Now that you've done that for the four to five whatever years that you're in the university and you're tax deducting from the tuition and other tuition related fees such as commuting, textbooks, whatever it is, now you can do that with your student loan interest. So after whatever you pay 
annually with your student loan, you can deduct that as taxes as well. So like I said, I'm not a specialist in this matter. This is all tips that I've used um, and that, that have helped me and that I've seen has helped other people. So like I said, always do your research. Already paying so much on your tuition, on your student loan, on the interest rates. I would, if I was you, I would benefit from anything you can get back, anything you can get cheaper. And like I said, it's the same thing with the, you know, your phone provider or whatever services and membership you are subscribed to. I would always give a call, always investigate, always research how how low can you get it? You know, there's no shame in that. You know, where these co corporations and all that, they they get so much money, they get you 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 already know it. Like why would you want to pay more than you should be paying you can always find a way and all it requires of you that's the thing that's that's the number one catch of everything all it requires of you is a little bit of your time and effort and then you can save much more time and money in the long run so that's that's literally what this whole video is about so if you do a little bit of more time and effort in saving your money making your money right now to pay off student loan debts later you don't have so much interest rate you don't have these big problems financial problems because you have so much debts around you etc so that's the end of the video i do really hope this video helped you I know that when i was going through this i wish i saw more videos like these I don't really see a lot of people talking about you know just the common people i'm not talking about people that are like already like youtube like millions of followers you know like people like you and me i don't see much of it being talked and discussed i see it more in the blogging world that's why i love blogging because people really go deep into their own personal finance journey and you know you can compare everyone how did they do it how did they save money and pay off their student loan debts how did i do it how did you do it etc so you know as usual always feel free to ask some questions always feel free to request a video always feel free to look at all the links down below read the blog posts uh watch the other videos watch the videos on the three personal finance books for beginners because it might help you as well it might inspire you as well to make more money save more money etc as i said those are all resources and good tools for your future and for your life and to have a better you know health education and wealth that's the point of this channel that's the point of Sandra shelf I want to make your self-help journey much much easier and accessible and personal to you and also feel free to share with me your personal story with your student loan debts have you do you have student loan debts are you in a repayment period right now is it starting are you nervous are you scared just let me know tell me talk to me in the comments feel free if you don't feel comfortable in the comments you can always email me i have my contact down below you can always come and talk to me on the blog posts etc whatever you feel comfortable just feel free you know i'm i'm an open person i like to listen to other people's stories i gain a lot of insight from other people it's not just about me it's not just about my personal story it's really about serving other people as well on this channel so i hope you enjoy please let me know what you want to see next do you want to see my personal story on how i paid off my student loan debts how i saved money because I can do that. It's going to be a longer video, but I will do it for you because I already wrote down the blog post anyways. And like I said, link below. But now I'm rambling, talking too much about these links. Let me hear about you. Let me hear how you're doing. Do you have any other financial problems that you want to talk about, you want to discuss about? Let me know. Like I, I need some more ideas. I mean, I have a, a million ideas, but I would want to know what you personally want so I can deliver it to you. But for now, I will see you on the next shelf. Bye.